I think it first started when my rebellion started telling me that things like my jeans pants, the stuss box that my parents had in their home, my small yarmulke, and, and what really confused me were those are things that, that I got from my parents, I got from home. The first reaction was to blame my parents for, for acting so guyish and, and for raising me so guyish. And, and I, I was so upset at my parents for taking my neshama, which was so precious, and for just throwing it in the garbage with things like that. It started some really, really difficult times in life, but thank God I came to the realization that my rabbin were wrong. And my parents were wrong too, so I just left the system entirely. And things got better. Back in eighth grade, I got a $10 knas for having my shirt untucked. Ever since then, my credit card statements and I have had a really hard time keeping tenacious. First of all, I want to warn you, serious trigger warning here. Words will be thrown around. Words like Rebbe, Hole, and other such shandas you should not know. When I was a bachar, I was in yeshiva. And one day, I was making coffee. And unfortunately, it was only whole milk. A travesty, unmitigated disaster. So I went to my Rebbe and I said, Rebbe, how is how am I supposed to maintain my belief in a Kaddish Baruch Hu when these things happen to me? And he looked at me with those piercing eyes and he said, Penches, once you go black, you can never go back. And that is the story of why, till this day, I only drink black coffee. The story is, I honestly didn't know there was a world outside the base Medrash. And one day I walked outside and, and there were other human beings out there. I just I was just curious and my Yitzhahara got the best of me. I grew up in a regular Yeshivish home, mainstream, from maybe even Heimish you would call it. One day I was at the library and I, by mistake, I, I was Nechshal and I saw a YouTube video. And on the bottom of the YouTube video there was some comments. And some guy, some atheist, I think he was from, I think he was from Turkey or something like that. And he was saying very good, he was saying maybe Taka people did come from monkeys. And I thought to myself, maybe, maybe the guy's right, maybe my Rebbe lied to me. Taka people are from monkeys. And maybe it's not Hashem. So I started being curious about it and I looked into it and I found a website called starkkoifer.com and it's like a blog. And the blogger, he tiny is very good, he says he says very good things. After a few weeks, maybe a month, I was wearing a blue shirt. My whole Yiddish kite was like different. I mean, once you wear a blue shirt, you hold a Yiddish cat anyway. It's like, forget it. You might as well not even be Jewish. Forget it. So that's that's pretty much my story. It's so good. Let's see if he's trying to leave, though. He can't leave. Wow. I did not think I was going to be asked this question today. I'm scared I'm just going to start to bawl my eyes out. I was in 10th grade. I was a very, 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 very innocent, sheltered little bacher. I had seen this girl in shul who I thought was was very chain, very tenua, and I and I really wanted to, to to go out with her. My rabbi found out. He called me over. He said, you know, Baruch, you know, this is this is a very, very big issue. You know, nothing is platonic. Doing things that you're supposed to be saving for marriage. He's like, I'm not going to let you do it. I, I, I can't let you. Hashem won't let me let you. Anyways, we were supposed to be meeting, it was Tuesday night at 7.30 on, at the 7-Eleven on Town Road. I'll never forget it. I get to 7-Eleven and I walk over and um, my Rebbe is wearing a shaitel dressed up as a, as a 10th grade Bishak of girl. I never, no one ever heard from this girl again. I don't know what happened to her, but I just had a lot of issues with God for creating that Rebbe. And I said, you look disgusting in that shaitel. And I went and I had a cheeseburger. This one time in Yeshiva camp, the Rebbe made me put my finger on the place the entire time, and if I didn't, he made me bench over from the beginning. I'm going to be serious for a moment. One time when I was in Yeshiva, I said, Birch uh, HaSamapil, with Hashem's name. Then uh, my mommy called me from America. She made me talk. She made me do it. Ever since then, I knew. Uh, the yeshiva life wasn't for me.